Thanks for joining me again for another watercolour <coughs> painting. This is clear water going on all over the paper. I'm using a large one and some high brush. So once I've wet the paper, I'm just gonna I'm just looking for a sort of general background flavour now. So I'm gonna start off with a bit of whoops, I've got to pick the paper. Put that on there. Bottom one down there. The paper will stretch as I'm doing this, so I'll have to refix it again, pull it, pull it tight after a couple of minutes probably. Right, so, so wherever you see the hairs fraying like that, all you've got to do is just dip them in, just dip the tips into the water and it brings it all back together again. So I'm going to go back, a bit of raw sienna, a bit more water, a bit of burnt on that. Just looking for the just trying to create sort of atmospheric background and trying to preserve a sort of lighter area all the way down the paper. Again, just dipping the tips in just into the water just to keep the paint moving freely. So that's sort of light, a lot of sort of light light wash. So I'm going to go a little bit darker now. Again, just dipping the tip, just the corner of the brush into the water, just to loosen everything up and bring the hairs back together. Got burnt on that ultramarine. Go for a little bit darker. Maybe a touch of light red in there as well. Now, now I'm trying for to get more individual colours rather than just one big mass. Bring that down. More ultramarine. There's water down there, so just pushing in from the side. Looks a bit of a mess at the moment, but hopefully it'll all it'll all come together as the painting develops. Put more ultramarine on this side. More burnt umber. Ultramarine. I'm just going to pop a few little. Few little clouds in the sky, it's quite a high horizon, so I ain't gonna worry too much about that. Just something over there. And then as the as the paper starts to dry, it'll go on stronger and stronger. Right. So I'm just gonna pull these tight, make sure it's flat against the board, and then what I'm gonna do is use a corner of a plastic card. I'm gonna scrape out some the most distant bit of land, just to take up that water there at the bottom. So um, I keep losing bit. This started off as a normal credit card size. I keep losing bits. I'm, I'm, I'm down to this little bit now. Right, so we got some distant mountains just up there. And then we got some big one there, something like that. Just soak that up as it comes down. Just take that out a bit. And just something behind there. I think there's another one here, but I'll put that in with a brush and do that dark so so that it pushes these ones really far back. It's nice and dark down here. The water's going to start quite high. So I'm going to push that right up there like that. And I think I might need to dry this now. So that's the most distant. Now the next, the next layer is starting about there, but because I want this to contrast and push that first layer really far back, I just want the paper a little bit drier. Not bone dry, but just dry, 
drier than it was, just so that this layer now goes on a little bit thicker. Bit of brown, bit of raw sienna, bit of ultramarine. Right up to the mountain, there like that. Look around. Coming down there like that. You can see how much stronger this is now. And on this right hand side we've got another start of another mountain going right up there. Just dip in the corner and just to loosen the paint slightly. Like what I might do, a bit dark. I'm going to go on a contrast now, so I'm going to go a little bit lighter. <coughs> so I've cleaned the brush, took the excess off on the tea towel, and I'm going to go in some raw sienna. <coughs> sort of lighter layer there. And a bit of burnt umber, dark underneath, the ultramarine. Don't want to again. Don't want to come down too far. This far bank is still well above the horizon line. Now this. Now to move over to the right hand side. And again. Just pushing. So just push that up just to get a light a bit there. Just so you get the contrast. Looks as if you yes, sort of like a little valley the other side. I'm just bringing this down. So it's like a river, it sort of flows round, just round that corner. So I'm just trying to create the impression of like a river bend just up there. Just a narrow inlet. And then these are just like little rocks and things. I might do a little bit of scraping just to emphasise those rocks a little bit. stretch it before you start painting. I just like to do as I'm going along. We we'll fix it here with these clips. And then I'm going to take that bit of plastic card. <coughs> and I'm just using the corner of this card. I'm just going to scrape in a few little rocks here and there. The paint's quite thick so I haven't got to wait for it to dry. Um, I think a common problem is the people put the paint on to uh, too watery so as soon as you scrape it in it, it fills back in so you'll have to wait either put it on thicker more paint less water or just wait until it's about half dry then you'll be able to scrape it in without it filling back in obviously if you wait too long if you wait too long and it dries completely and you can't scrape anything you can always dampen it with a clean damp brush Loosen the paint and then you'll be able to, you'll be good to go. A few little tiny ones, obviously that's further away so I've done them slightly smaller. So coming further forward, always start from the furthest point and come forward right to the foreground last. So there's some more rocks here in the foreground. I've got quite a fairly dry brush here, so this paint's going on in sort of dollops. I do use it dry, but because I've, I've started squeezing more on, I used to have like little thin pans and it stays dry throughout the painting. Now I've got into the habit of squeezing a little bit more on. So what happens is, as you get in, as you wet it more and more, it starts to become more and more sticky. So you're sort of getting the best of both worlds. You can you still use your, your dollops if that's what you want. So these are sort of rocks. I'll make them look a bit more like rocks in a, in a sec with the card again. So I don't want to go... I'm just trying to push down that dark bit into the, to the light area. You just get the maximum contrast. So 
like here, a few more little rocks down there. I've gone left-handed. So what I tend to do is have the light coming down in the middle. So if you can make the lights come in from there, you're just catching the right-hand side of these rocks, the shadows on the left. On the right-hand side, I do it right-handed. So the same thing, the lights come in there, and it's catching the left-hand side of the rocks, and you've got the shadows on the right. Awkward at first, but eventually you, you get you get the hang of doing it left-handed. So we've got some nice little foreground rocks. And I think all I'm going to add next, switch to the rigger brush. Same with the rigger brush. Let's see what that looks like with the mount on it. So this is our finished painting with the mount on. So if we go and have a closer look at it, you can see these distant mountains here. I scraped in with the card, give it the impression of like a snowy, snow peak mountains. And then the, the, the next layer coming towards us, this, as you can see I'll put it on really dark, just to contrast against those, those light coloured mountains. Same with this one on the right hand side against the, maybe the sky could have done with doing a little bit lighter there. But again coming down towards the bottom, gone a bit lighter, just so that this next layer I could put on really dark, just to see the profile. And then scraping all these little rocks along this shore. Sort of where this the, the river sort of goes round the, the bend. If you remember at the start when I was doing all the back, the sky and background, sort of preserve this light colour, which gives the impression of light reflecting off the walls. It's come off quite nicely, this little bit here. And just see where I've pushed these, um, the bits of mud and whatnot, straight over the top of that light colour to give maximum contrast. And you see where, give the impression of the light just catching, catching the edges of these rocks with shadows on the other side. Same again with these rocks here over on the left, just catching the corners, shadows on the left hand side. Well I hope you like that, thanks for watching, any questions please don't hesitate to ask, keep practicing and I'll see you again soon.